Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. Some time ago, or rather long time ago, I did a review of Chinese Machinist X99 MR9A motherboard. Back then that was my go-to motherboard because it had a decent VRM, quad channel memory support, two fully connected PCI Express X16 slots, plus additional X4, M.2 slots, and so on. And what's more important, the motherboard had a decent quality and the pricing was very reasonable. Today is 2024 and on my desk I have a Machinist X99 MR9A that I bought at the very end of 2023 and it's a slight modification which is called MR9A Pro. So in this video I'm going to retest these two motherboards so we can see if it is still my favorite go-to Chinese X99 motherboard or something has changed and we need to move on. As usual, I have done my printout with the most important information about these motherboards and the differences between them, but the most important part you need to know is that there are no major differences between the original MR9A and the MR9A available on AliExpress right now. Basically, everything I have said in my original video is still applicable and MR9A is still my favorite Chinese X99 motherboard. Compared to the originally reviewed version, MR9A has got an upgraded audio codec, and this time we have Realtek ALC897. For some reason there is a problem with the driver's installation for this audio codec, and my attempt to install official Realtek drivers fail. Nevertheless, there is an easy solution, you just need to download custom drivers or customly repacked drivers and manually install them from the device manager. Of course, link for these drivers will be available in the video description. Now let's talk about the difference between MR9A and this MR9A Pro modification. Basically, it's the same motherboard, it's just a slightly different variation. MR9A Pro has two M.2 slots for PCI Express and NVMe SSD drives. Even though one of them is titled as SATA, it is NVMe. So if you have old SATA M.2 SSD drives, they are not going to work on the Pro version. Also, we have got an M.2 slot for Wi-Fi Bluetooth adapters, which is nice and important for some. Additionally, even though the VRAM is identical, on MR9A Pro we have a slightly smaller heatsink with an active cooling in form of a tiny unknown fan which is connected straight to the motherboard with a constant rotation speed and it might sound pretty annoying. And lastly, for some stupid reason, Chinese decided to remove the old trusty metal I.O. shield with this kind of bulky plastic construction. It may look nice and maybe it boosts sales for uh, some of the AliExpress stores or maybe on the Chinese market, but in my opinion this is a ridiculous design, especially because most of the time this plastic shield is not aligned well and it is a real struggle to get it properly installed into a chassis or into my test bench. A part of my standard testing where I verify every possible feature of the motherboard and also test with the Huan Andrew BIOS, this time I have validated compatibility with BIOS from iEngineer. And here I have got some bad news, because my MR9A turned out to be defective. First of all, the motherboard had a defective audio output, so I simply would not get any audio no matter what drivers or no drivers I would use. It's just a hardware defect. Then, when I tried to flush BIOS from iEngineer using my Flash programmer, the motherboard just bricked. Flash would go through, but data verification would fail. I tried multiple times uh, with many different options and it just doesn't work. This could mean that Chinese either used a defective BIOS chip or they have used a, some sort of an in-house production and labeled it as WinBond, but it is not fully compatible with the WinBond BIOS chips and my programmer simply destroyed it or flushed something in a corrupted way, I don't know. Right now I do not have a possibility to replace the BIOS chip, so unfortunately this MR9A will go to the side and wait for its future. And testing MR9A Pro, I decided to go in a slightly different approach. Even though I engineer claims that his BIOS can only be flushed with a flash programmer, I decided not to risk and flush his BIOS using FPT or flash programming tool. And surprise, surprise, it works just fine with no issues, no quirks. Why would someone want to use BIOS from iEngineer? 
Well, because this is a much better bias in terms of modern features, modern security holes, and it does not have hidden, possibly injected Chinese code. From the functionality point of view, we have a much faster booting time and we also have support for overclocking of CPUs that have unlocked multiplier. In this case, I am testing with i7-5820K and in my previous test with the Chigida x 99 4 I reported that even though overclocking options were enabled, the CPU would still drop its frequency to 3.6 GHz. I am glad to report that with Machinist x 99 mr 9 a Pro, this issue does not exist and my i7-5820K sustains the frequency that I input in Intel XTU. I have done some stress testing using 3.9 GHz because I wanted to keep stock voltage to do not overload the VRM, but you can go higher if you would wish to. Of course, BIOS from iEngineer supports all the standard features such as RAM timings, a sleep mode, smart fun and resizable bar. Unfortunately, he is a bit too lazy and he did not add BIOS menus for overclocking and for resizable bar, so these things have to be tuned from Windows. There is also a downside. BIOS from iEngineer does not support legacy or CSM booting mode, it is only UEFI. So if you have an old graphics card that does not have UEFI video BIOS support, then you are out of luck. You will not get anything on your screen and you would have to replace your graphics card. Now, speaking about CPUs such as i7-5820K that have only 28 PC Express lanes, we still have pretty suboptimal PC Express lanes routing on the motherboard. So, with MR9A Pro, if you are using a 28 piece Express Lane CPU, then the first piece Express X4 slot is not connected, the first piece Express X16 slot is connected as X8, and only the last 8 lanes are connected, so the graphics card that have only X4 or X8 connections, such as RX 6600, RX 6650, or RTX 4060, will not be recognized in this slot. The second M.2 slot is also not connected, but the second PC Express X16 slot is fully connected as PC Express X16, which is pretty good. It's not optimal, but it's also not a disaster. The good thing is that this information is irrelevant to most of you, because you will be using a, a Xeon CPU with a 40 PC Express lanes, and in that case everything is connected, everything works as it should work. After testing these two motherboards, I can say that Machinist X99 MR9A and its variations are still my favorite go-to motherboards if you need an X99 LJ2011 version 3 motherboard from AliExpress. Sure, my particular MR9A sample happened to be defective, but I don't think that overall quality of Machinist motherboards degraded significantly. I have tested multiple of the motherboards of different variations, different models, and I have also assembled uh, several computers using the boards, and none of them were defective except of this one. Of course, the motherboards still have the standard Chinese quirks, such as non-working power consumption and temperature sensors, smart fan works only for one fan header, and it's the CPU fan header, and only if you connect a 4-pin PWM fan. Other than that, it's pretty decent quality for a decent price. So with this, I have to say thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I really appreciate your support and see you in the next videos.